Hello everyone, this is uh, HDD Recovery. Today we received this um, nice little case. This is a Porsche design Lacey hard drive uh, that was purchased at the Apple store. And uh, the customer that brought it in um, said that one day it was working fine. It has a bunch of um, her personal pictures, a year's worth of pictures backed up to it. And uh, um, right now she cannot access uh, the drive anymore because uh, it's not getting recognized. Now let's uh, just break it down into category and try to understand why um, this uh, this had happened to her. Now <clears throat> in order to do that we need to uh, connect the drive and see uh, what we have that is coming up on the screen at least in the disk utility uh, in terms of the hard drive and its accessibility. So I'm just gonna go ahead here and uh, hook this up to uh, my iMac. Okay, I hope you guys heard that stuff, uh, those beeping sounds. Now, <clears throat> if the drive initially, when initially is connected uh, through uh, USB uh, or any other type of um, uh, connection and it's not spinning up, then there's a problem with the, with the hard drive. Okay, because that's, um, that's what the hard drives are designed to do, they need to spin. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, disconnect this. I already unplugged it, so I'm just gonna disconnect this. Now, this is a really nice enclosure, but it's very futuristic looking and matches up great with um, other Apple products. Uh, this is designed by Lee C. Great company, by the way, but they do not make hard drives. Uh, so the hard drive inside of it most likely is made by um, either Western Digital, Seagate, Samsung, or uh, the Shiba or something, maybe Hitachi even. So let's uh, figure out a way how to uh, get this opened up. There are no bolts, as you can see. Um, um, any hardware of any kind on any side. So my guess is that this plastic enclosure slides into this metal uh, overlay casing uh, and uh, there gotta be some prongs in it. It looks like previous place had already tried to get access to it so okay I can see on the side where the connector is right there uh, on the sides of them you can see little prongs so um, just use something like a flathead screwdriver uh, to jam the prongs in there okay yeah it, and it easily comes right out so you just gotta press up on these prongs and there you go it just slides out okay so Okay, great. So this is a Samsung hard drive inside. Like I said, uh, Lacey does not make hard drives. So uh, what we're gonna do is, uh, first of all, eliminate the problem of the bridge controller on here. This bridge controller is what uh, connects um, the output on the USB to your SATA interface on the hard drive. So if there's any problem uh, with the bridge controller, that could potentially uh, be the cause of you not being able to get access to your hard drive. So let's eliminate that problem by uh, getting that hard drive out from this bridge and um, testing it on something else that we already know uh, that works for sure. So um, looks like it's got some uh, it's got some uh, T8 screws on the back of it. I have a screwdriver here for that. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, unscrew this real quick. It's just four little screws at the back of this thing, and I think there's one more screw that's just securing um, the bridge near the connection tab, so it doesn't wiggle around, wiggle around every time you try to connect it. Yeah, so it's just a one Phillips screw. So just gonna undo that. Yeah, so it's fairly easy to disassemble this thing and uh, get it prepped for testing. Uh, this is really nice design, by the way. USB 3 connection, very fast. Um, so that's the bridge that we need to eliminate from the situation. We don't need this to test out the drive and get access to the contents. Um, there are no a, there are no types of uh, any processors on here that may perform hardware encryption. So we're not going to worry about that. This is not a um, this is not something like a Western Digital Passport uh, hard drive, so 
Samsung. Right, so now, now that we have the drive out of the enclosure, uh, I'm gonna film it uh, from a different angle. I have a USB caddy uh, that uh, we're just gonna plug this into and see if we can get access to the drive. Okay, so now that we have our caddy all set up uh, and ready to go, uh, we're just gonna pop our hard drive in the bait number two and power this thing on. Right, so it's making the exact same sound. Uh, usually what that means is that the heads are not allowing uh, the hard drive to spin uh, because they're physically holding the platters uh, or there is an issue with um, a bearing or the spindle assembly. Um, most likely it is not the bearing issue. This kind of thing was very, very popular with the Shiba hard drives. This is a Samsung. I have never seen Samsung's fail this way. So um, I'm gonna place a bet that the heads are actually holding the platters and um, I'll explain why this is uh, such a common thing. When the drive is powered off, okay, um, heads have to rest in a specially designated area. It's called parking ramp. Okay, now that parking ramp is located out of, outside of the platters. Uh, all of your data is located on the platter, so when the drive turns on, it waits till it reaches the full speed to create those aerodynamics for heads to be able to float and not skid on the platter. Only then, it releases the heads into the platter zone and they start reading your information. Okay, so whenever the drive is off power, those heads have to be on the parking ramp to uh, avoid any friction between heads and the platter. So. <clears throat> What can happen is if um, is when your hard drive is off power and you accidentally dropped it on uh, on the ground or off the table or something, you know, is it just that the hard enough so that the hard drive experienced any kind of impact? Now that impact may force the heads to slip off that ramp and land on the platter surface. Okay, so if that happens, those heads will act like brakes on the car. They will jam up the platters. They will not allow them to spin up. Now. Uh, different hard drives have different uh, friction forces and they hold their platters differently. The more heads that are in the drive, the more difficult it's going to be to release them without having any damage afterwards. So it's a very, very delicate process. I would strongly advise about <laughs> against uh, trying to get this done at home. Uh, this is not something that um, should be done in regular room conditions. We are using class 100 air environment for this. Uh, so that we can open up the drive and avoid contamination getting into inside of the drive. So that is a very important factor because uh, any contamination can be crucial, okay, because uh, if the dust gets inside the drive, next time you power it on, most likely it will create damage that cannot be reversed afterwards. So uh, you have to be very careful with this. Um, you know, I would strongly advise against uh, either contacting um, somebody who is uh, familiar with this uh, or trying to find somebody locally who provides these services on a um, significant enough level. They need to have clean clean room or they need to have laminar flow bench at least. They need to be able to uh, get this stuff done. Uh, a lot of data recovery companies nowadays, uh, they don't provide a full range of services. Maybe they claim they do, but a lot of them actually outsource data to bigger or more qualified companies that um, are good at this stuff. So I would definitely do your your part of the research when you're trying to choose uh, a company to help you out with because I know the replacement cost on these things, it's not, it's not great. I mean, it's $80 to $150. You can buy any external hard drive you want. Uh, but um, what's kept on that drive is important, right? So I mean, sometimes it's irreplaceable, and uh, that's what we trying to do here. And uh, data recovery is our main uh, goal. We don't do anything else. So <clears throat> next step of the process would be to actually physically open up that drive, have a look inside, find out what the issue is, and correct it. Now, if it's the platters uh, that are being held by heads, we need to release those heads, park them back into the parking zone, and the issue will be taken care of. Uh, we'll need to follow up with the imaging process. That is also a very important step to get proper results. Or if the issue is related to the spindle or the bearing, remove the platters into a donor chassis that has exact same motor and setup and run it that way. So 
We're just gonna go into a second uh, room here, which is specifically designed for physical recovery that we use and um, perform uh, a recovery process on this drive. This is, uh, this is our hard drive. It's secured by six screws that we can see and one is always hidden. This would need to be cut through, so uh, let's just uh, go ahead and open this up. This is a T T6 screws that are securing this um, lid. I'm gonna open it up and uh, have a look what's going on on the inside of this drive. Okay, so uh, once we have all seven screws out, um, very carefully, we're just gonna pry this up on each corner. Not in the middle because the discs are located here and it's the last thing you wanna do is to scratch the drive when you try to open it. So this is it. As I said, uh, when the hard drive heads slip out and land on the platter surface, that platter surface is automatically gets jammed. So I'm just gonna show you that it, it's physically not moving. Like I'm trying to rotate this and it's stuck. It doesn't wanna budge. So the process does require a specialized tool to be slipped in between the head and the platter to lift them safely without dragging them across the platters. And that's what we're gonna do next. Um, since this is a little bit time consuming, we're just gonna skip ahead to a, a point where the process is done. And we're gonna get back to uh, uh, the recovery station and we're gonna start uh, accessing this drive and see what we can pull out of it. Now that our hard drive is back together, uh, we're gonna perform uh, imaging of uh, client's data. Now, in order to perform that imaging, we need to hook it up to uh, one of our uh, machines that does that. and. Um, see what uh, what we're able to get so this drive wasn't able to spin up previously and uh, instead of spinning uh, it was beeping um, without having any kind of movement on the inside so right now we're just gonna power it on so our drive spun up and uh, staying it's staying in its idle not clicking not humming so that's a really good sign over here if you look you can see those two green lights come up that means the drive is ready and uh, we need to go into vendor specific utility so we select samsung um, automatically it chooses uh, which model and family it belongs to because our id is right there uh, the serial number ending with one two uh, sorry one zero two nine that's what been recorded at the beginning of the video and this is our hard drive um, also one zero two nine so the utility status seems to be great, no errors there. Uh, we're just gonna check its uh, reading performance and try to read some data. Like for example, go on to sector number 63. And uh, that's what we have there. Lacey, share, FAT32, that's what we have. Came out of the Lacey, FAT32 filing system, great. Um, so this drive is ready for imaging. So we have already, um, uh, set up the task for it to kind of get it going and um, now just to show you the performance of that imaging process uh, I'm just gonna switch on to the screen of that imaging and, and run it up okay so um, this is the drive so now it's running those green blocks that you see that means the data is being imaged without any problems any errors uh, this is the speed that we're working on uh, not the ideal speed but for a drive that um, um, was unsealed it's pretty good and we're not running into any issues uh, in terms of bad sectors and stuff like that or inaccessible areas so that is great so this drive will be fully recovered once we're done with it so if you guys have problems with uh, hard drive that needs any sort of assistance 
um, you can send us an email at info at hddrecovery.ca or you can send a request submission on our website that you see the address for uh, below the screen. Also on our website we have instructions for the shipping if it's not a local hard drive that uh, we need to repair. So you can subscribe to our channel. We will be shooting more of these videos and uploading them constantly. Also like our Facebook page, you can see the address for that at the bottom of the screen as well. I'd like to thank everybody for watching this. Stay tuned, we'll be back with some more videos.